This is number 5 in a series of videos about Thornbury FM, a small community radio station in Thornbury, South Gloucestershire, in the southwest of England. Thornbury FM broadcast for 28 days, twice a year, under a short-term restricted service license, SRSL. It started transmitting on 87.7 FM with simultaneous webcasting in the autumn of 2005 and its final broadcast under that name was its ninth in autumn 2009. This time I want to examine the station's attitude towards on-air racist comments. All and I fall Them not let me go now Thornbury FM had an equal opportunities policy which, amongst other things, dealt with the way its members should have behaved on air. So it was good then that Thornbury FM ensured that its members behaved respectfully and responsibly. Or did it? After nine completed broadcasts and four and a half years of existence, let's see how the station performed on air. Dissipation, race relations, consolation, segregation, dispensation, isolation, exploitation, mutilation, mutation, miscreation, confirmation to the evils of the world. During autumn 2007, Ben Park and Stephen Gardner's Music and Waffle Show included the spoof Baker's Dozen competition. This was aired on all four Sundays. The fictitious caller, trying his luck in the competition, was always Hispanic. Javier Cortez, man. I come from a San Fernando Pueblo Creek, man, in the rolling the shears of Santa Maria. Carlos Acuna Gonzalez, man. I come from Recreativo Hell for years in the mountainous region of Alasamaca, Sese. My name is Carlito Jimenez Santos, man. And I come from Pampaloma Diablo in the rolling mow hills of the Santo Greco in El Alameda. My name is Wagner Silva de Souza, but my friends call me Wagner Love for sure, they say. I come from the rolling snow-capped hills of San Ferrero, Ashe, in Bella Maria, down by Camille de Mero in Valencia, man. Since Thornbury FM previously had received complaints about remarks made on air, you might have thought that the station would have taken additional care to ensure the quality of its on-air output. Even though the callers to the Baker's Dozen were fictitious, they were referred to disparagingly as you will now hear. You mummy loving grease ball you. Grease ball. You son of a crazy frog loving inbred goat. You greasy pig face smelly son of a shy horse. You ugly horse face son of Anne Whittacom. You ugly pig face Hispanic grocery boy. You big nose love child of Russell Grant and Lorraine Kelly. You smelly fortune son of a Welsh pygmy gerbil. You leather face oh, Barry Manlow loving inbred. What positive message did anyone think would be achieved by on-air descriptions like grease ball, inbred, greasy, pig-faced, smelly, ugly, and horse-faced. Even though this was supposed to be a comical piece, there is a decency threshold that was crossed over. What alarms me is that Thornbury FM chose to have this offensive rubbish on its podcast page for a period of 10 months for people to download. During that same fifth broadcast, Thornbury FM, for the first time, had a Spanish presenter called Luis Sebrián, who aired later that same day, although it seems that Park and Gardner did not appreciate any implications. However, it appeared that someone was listening, because the Baker's Dozen feature was pulled, and did not appear again apart from a jokey gold clip on the second program of the Spring 2008 broadcast, with James Wilson, newly returned to the fold, chipping in his Tuffneyworth. Enjoy this. Sorry, Javier, you're not a winner today. Now get off the phone. 
That's the best bit of Baker's Dozen. That's so really good. I enjoyed that. Very, very <laughs> so good. It's a very I wonder why we're long running now, feature. Long running feature. <laughs> I it, can't think. So they still felt able to make a subdued joke about it. However, the Music and Waffle Show still took the opportunity to laugh at foreigners, as with the mimicking of the Chinese accent in the first program of that spring 2008 season. Again, with the juvenile Wilson chipping in his tuppenny worth. And Chinese leader Hu Jintao. The magazine. <laughs> very, <laughs> very, 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 very well presented. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Park, Gardner and Wilson weren't the first to make puerile racist comments on Thornbury FM. Christopher Isherwood, also known as Chris Connery, was the aging trustee and presenter whose regular on-air remarks caused me most concern. Whilst the remarks were not hate-filled, venomous diatribes, they still had no place on a community radio station. The following were just the comments that I heard, and I only listened to a small part of his overall output. During Thornby FM's first broadcast in autumn 2005, in a pre-recorded interview with a white presenter who said he was from the black country, Connery responded, But you're not black, are you? During a live daytime show, he went into a rant against politically correct terminology with cringe-inducing references to disability issues and more disturbingly, a reference to what white Texans called African Americans back in the 1960s. During Thornby FM's second broadcast in spring 2006, Connery interviewed a committee member of the South Gloucestershire Asian Project, SGAP, and made comments that subsequently were officially described as tasteless. Before the guests arrived, Connery told listeners to relax and have a chapati. When the guest arrived, Connery informed listeners that he was about to discuss euthanasia, that is, youth in Asia. When the guest was describing Untaktri, a children's singing game, Connery announced that it would make a great drinking game in the pub. Connery's on-air conduct was reported on more than one occasion, but the station chose not to remove him, and I do not believe that the station ever found him guilty of misconduct, despite supposedly having carried out disciplinary investigations. During Thornbury FM's fourth broadcast in spring 2007, during a piece highlighting inadvertently amusing quiz answers, he selected this one to read out. Give an example of a race that is dangerous. And the contestant answered, Arabs. In the final week, he taunted listeners by pretending that he was about to say something contentious because there were people waiting to report him. Also in the final week on his show and as a guest on another program, he complained about the atmosphere of political correctness that was a feature of modern life. During Thornby FM's fifth broadcast in autumn 2007, in the second week, he commented on air about the people in Thornbury who complain about the station having not enough people who are not English on the air. For the alleged benefit of the people who complain, he stated that he had invited people of many ethnicities to be on his show so that they could talk about what life was like for them in Thornbury, but that they had declined. Because there are people, Laura, out there in Thornbury, yes. some people in particular, who say, we haven't got enough people who are not English mm. on the air. Well, believe you me, people who complain, I have personally invited 
lots and lots of other people, Asian, Chinese, Italians, mm -hmm. um, South African, Polish, onto Thornbury FM and onto my show to talk about oh. what's life like in Thornbury for mm. you, and they've declined. They oh. haven't come on for whatever reason. By people who complain, he meant me. Nevertheless, for the station's first ever broadcast, he interviewed former local Methodist minister Iesinga Vunipola, and he asked her about rugby, her husband's sport, rather than delving into areas that could have furthered an understanding of multicultural issues, such as her experiences as a Tongan and those of her family whilst living in Thornbury. In the final week of that autumn 2007 broadcast, he possibly explained why so many people had declined his invitation. Before playing a song from Kyrgyzstan, he wanted his guest to read out the song title in Kyrgyz. But upon seeing the name was given in English, he announced, Oh, it's not in foreign. Can I engage upon you mm. to read this? Oh, it's not in foreign. It's not Kyrgyz, whatever they call it. <laughs> so far from bridging divides, as required by the station's constitution, Connery reinforced division by identifying others as foreign and therefore different to us. Connery uses references to other cultures to illustrate something negative, such as the unwelcoming attitude of Thorbury people, which he claimed to experience when he first moved to the town. This is a part of the world I moved to many years ago, and it was a culture shock for me too, a northerner, because up north to say, how are we doing? All right, everybody, come down here and it's, uh, well, it's like a big wall of China around Thornbury. I mean Unfriendly southerners and fear of ethnic minorities are recurrent themes in the Connery monologues. Basically, he has a fear of any significant community establishing itself in Thornbury, except Northerners, presumably. This is what he posted onto the internet in 2002, and is evidence of the innate racism of the man, because it could not be argued that he just meant run-down areas with unemployment, because Thornbury has that already. Later in this video, you will note another resident using the term ghetto when referring to new immigrants. I imagine Connery is still expecting a flood of asylum seekers any day now. Anyway, although these may not have been extreme cases, why should they have been happening at all? They were divisive remarks which set people aside highlighting their cultural differences as something to be wary of instead of embracing those differences and learning more. The accusations that were made against Thornbury FM were certainly embarrassing to the station which, whilst refusing to acknowledge racism in internal investigations, got its trustees to attend a diversity training session organised by the local council. Seven members attended and it is believed that Connery was one of them. It is probable that the training happened as a direct result of the allegations rather than having been pre-planned. <laughs>